Hey friends, I'm back with another video and we're going to do another video on tips and tricks to help you get into EverQuest. Say you're new to EverQuest, you've never played before, or you're a returning player who's forgot some of the things that can help you uh, when, when playing the game. Uh, so some of these you may see, uh, especially if you, if you play all the time and you're going to be like, duh, that's like old and, and everybody knows that, but not everybody knows that. As I play and, and work my channel here, uh, I get more and more people saying, hey, you know, I saw you doing this one trade skill video and, and how did you do this so quickly? And I'm like, oh, that's like second nature. But to someone who's brand new, it's not. So some of these things might be like, a duh, uh, but to someone who's new, it's not. It's just uh, every little thing, you know, can help a lot. And some uh, of my viewers have said, yeah, it took me a while before I learned this. So I'm going to do this hoping that it can help a few new or returning players. And one of these, so simple, I know, but again, uh, there's been some of my viewers who have said that it took them a minute to figure it out. So let's say you're doing trade skills. This is going to be the first uh, helpful thing. You're doing trade skills and uh, you don't have the recipe yet. So this example we're going to do fletching, but this could be for any of the trade skills, right? Um, and so you've got a stack of, of arrowheads. And well, if you click on it and you get this thing and then you got to go with the scale, you know, and you just want to grab one. So you can either try to get it to one, but it's so hard. Or, you know, you click in the little box and you go uh, clear it and then you hit one and okay, you've got one. But that was just tedious. It took so long and so much work just to pull out one stupid arrowhead. And then you've got to do it for the... The groove knocks and the the shafts and the fletchings and it's just so much work. But it's so easy if you just hold down control, left click, you pull out one. Hold control, left click, you got one. Again, hold the control key, left click on the stack and you got one. I know this seems like obvious to anyone who's playing all the time but to someone who's new or who's come back after a long hiatus it's like a really good trick <laughs> so again just you know hold control and you could grab them easy and there you go now once you've created an item uh, you know any, any trade skill item you have the recipe if you want to just use the recipe and get it to go real quick and easy, hold control, right click on your trade skill thing. This works with fletching kits, uh, tailoring kits, uh, forges, just anything. If you hold control when you open it or click on it, you get this expanded uh, kit. And so I could just type in, say, arrow, hit enter. And here's everything I have a recipe for. And I can just click on the one and see this one I have all the uh, ingredients for. I can click on make all. And that just means I'm going to keep making them until I either click off make all or, or I run out of ingredients. So we're going to hit combine. And uh, this is another helpful thing. This is only on live EverQuest, by the way. If you're on a project server, you're not going to, you might not see the combined percentage. Uh, but if you're on a project server, the control and left click to pull out one from a stack still works. Even on P99, that works. So this, uh, most of these helpful hints are for live EverQuest on regular servers. But it, a lot of them will still work on TLPs or even on some of the project servers like uh, P99, well, some of them will, or or uh, Project Lazarus is one of my favorites. 
So there you go. And, and you just keep making them and making them. Now, of course, pay attention. You know, you don't want to end up with like 20 stacks of arrows and they're taking up all the slots and all your bags. Uh, that could be a little bit, you know, annoying. Like, oops, all arrows. You know, your bags are just chock full of arrows. Another helpful uh, hint or just trick or whatever you want to call it for EverQuest is the use how to use the parcels and nobles exchange. Parcels are just one of my favorite things that have been added to EverQuest. It used to be a struggle when you wanted to send something to one of your alt characters, especially if it was on a different account because back in the day and this what might still happen on on project servers like p99 if you want to give something to an alternate character whether it's on the same account or another account a lot of times you would have to ask a friend someone another player you know to hold it for you while you logged out and logged back in with your other character and and trust that they would hold the items for you and actually give it to the other character. Uh, another thing that I used to do, because I didn't have friends, was I would find maybe a, a, an empty little house or hut somewhere or, or room uh, in, in whatever city, uh, like Calathin or even Hollis or, or something, and I would drop some of my items on the floor, log out really quick, log back in, hope I didn't crash you know, in between, and hope that those items were still there on the floor and pick them up. Now, that was one of the more risky and dangerous things because A, an NPC sometimes could come by and pick it up. I've seen it happen. Uh, a player can come by and pick it up or it might just vanish, uh, especially if you accidentally crashed in between switching characters. Noble Exchange eliminated that. All you do is you right click like you would on any other NPC. You click on parcels and here you can send items. So let's say we were going to send a sword. Uh, we would type in the person's name and then hit send. But with this I'm sending some money. So I'm going to hit accept. I'm going to put the platinum here. I'm going to hit deposit and then I'm going to type in their name and I'm going to make sure to confirm the name and once I'm absolutely sure the name is correct because you know this is a lot of plat you hit send and if you look up here it will give you a little tell that says Ward Taller told you I will deliver the money blah 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 to Talela uh, as soon as possible. And that's it, you've sent the money. And then the character receiving the money will see a little package icon in their uh, character window thing up here. That means that they have a parcel. So what they do is they go up to a parcel, person, merchant, whatever. <laughs> Uh, I actually I don't know if there's a parcels one up here. I think only downstairs. So let's go down there. And of course, wouldn't you know it, the elevator's coming up when I'm trying to go down. And and yes, I'm riding the elevator wrong. Feel free to uh, point it out if you want. Fill up. Okay, wait. I'm going to the bank. No, parcels, parcels, and noble exchange. So you know I'm in a completely different zone. And uh, here we go, parcels. And I believe it tells you, yes, it tells you who it's from. And uh, it gives you the quantity and it gives you the date and all that. So it tells you a lot of information about who sent it. And if you want to, you can thank them. There's also actually a way uh, that you could send things to other people. So let's say I wanted to send some copper to somebody. I need to keep all my money. Let's hit deposit. And let's put the name in. 
and let's say we want to give them a note. Uh, pretend I'm sending something else that's valuable, like some pelts or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I'm I, I'm sending it to my other character. So I'm being silly with this. I'm saying thank you for the cash, sucker. Yeah, here's some copper. And I hit send. So there we go. And of course, here we see I've got parcels. Oh, let's see what it is. And I click on parcels. And over here, I got to extend the window a little bit to see the note. But there under notes, it says, thank you for the cash, sucker. And here I've been uh, trolled by getting eight copper. So... <laughs> Uh, and that's a great uh, way to send things back and forth between characters is using parcels and noble exchange. Another helpful hint or trick that you can do is when you're selling things to a merchant, a lot of times we will just single click on something and hit sell and we'll get whatever money that that's worth. But say you have a bag full of stuff, full of junk that you've looted and you don't need any of it. Everything in the bag can go. Well, do you want to click on the bag and make sure that that is the right bag. You don't want to accidentally sell something that you didn't intend to sell at all. So once you're absolutely sure that that's the bag, you can left click on the bag itself and here it'll tell you what you get or how much uh, cash you get for selling everything in the bag and you can just click on sell and it's got a confirmation window are you sure that you would like to sell all of the sellable contents within this container and you click yes and now every item in that bag sold and you've got a plat and six gold and five copper for all the items that were in that bag it makes selling goods so much quicker. But of course, you do want to make sure that if you had a few things in there that you wanted to keep, that you sort it out into another bag before selling all the contents. Because of course, everything sells. And you don't want to lose out by unintentionally selling something that was actually more valuable if you were to hang on to it or trade it with another player for plat or or whatever. So that's a way that you could sell all your contents very quickly. Another great trick that I learned actually not too long ago, so it's kind of funny, it's something that I didn't know that you could do until maybe this past year. Uh, so you're in the bazaar, right? And remember, you gotta have a premium account to sell things in the bazaar. Uh, but let's say you have a premium account, you want to sell things, and you want to sell them as fast as possible. You, you don't really care about getting the most money for it. You just want to get rid of it because maybe it's, it's like crappy or something, you know? Uh, like here we go. This is a good example. It's just simple defiant plate boots. They're pretty common. They drop pretty regular. And... You, you don't want to have to go and, and open up the bazaar window and type it all out and search and, and everything. So the quickest way to find out is if you hold control. The quickest way to find out is if you hold control shift and left click on an item. It will automatically populate the uh, bazaar window and it will show you all the ones that are on sale. And then I usually click on the platinum here uh, and it will list it from cheapest to most expensive. So I open up my trader window and I want to find that, uh, there we go, the simple, simple boots. And, and it works over here too if you do it actually from the bazaar window. It doesn't have to be from your inventory, but it could be either or from the bazaar window or from your inventory and it works. And uh, so mine is set as the cheapest. It's just I don't have bazaar uh, the trader on so it doesn't it doesn't show. And, and that's one thing that you could do is if you could sell your 
whatever your item is, you know, one plat or, or more less than what everybody else is doing, yours will show up as the cheapest. So there you go. It's, it's the cheapest in the bazaar. Now, there's some things that you might not want to let it go for that cheap. Maybe it's some uh, something you had to do with uh, crafting, like blacksmithing or whatever. And you're like, no, I put way too much time and work into this. I want at least this much amount. So you might charge a little more. And it usually will still sell because once all the cheapest are, are, are purchased, um, then they'll go up to the second cheapest and the third and whatever. I mean, unless all the other uh, traders keep restocking, then eventually you might have to swallow your pride and sell whatever it is for less, or you're just going to be stuck with it forever. So that's a, a great way. Again, you just hold Control, Shift, left click on the item, and you'll see the cheapest thing. And look here, this is not the cheapest one in the bazaar. So I can click on it here, and uh, let's change the price to uh, like maybe 75 hit accept set price find and now mine is the cheapest in the bazaar and hopefully this will sell because it's just a rough defiant trident um, if I were to sell it to a merchant I'd only get maybe five plat for it so getting 75 even getting 10 would be worth it more uh, just so so just sell it sell it for less if you have to obviously if there's people out there selling something that you could just sell for five plat to any any merchant npc merchant uh, and they're selling it for four then don't sell it for four don't be a sucker <laughs> sell it off to a merchant and get the five for it because i've seen people do that they'll take something that they could get uh, 10 plat for from any merchant and they'll be selling it for nine and I'm like I mean sure that's kind of sweet I guess they're taking a loss and offering it to players but it's not sustainable and it's kind of a waste of your time and inventory space when you could be selling things to players that are a heck of a lot more valuable and not to mention I mean if it's that cheap any player could probably come across it on merchants and buy it that way or whatever so again you know control shift left click on any item and it shows up for the price sometimes it doesn't show up right away so you have to still hit find items once it's populated but there you go sometimes you'll find yourself stuck somewhere where it's really dark and you can barely see as you can see here it's really dark right now so one thing you can do is you can always turn up the gamma a little bit uh, so you could see a little bit better at least until daytime comes and you and you can see again and you can always turn the gamma back down so if you find yourself in the dark you can always mess with the gamma and all it is is alt o to toggle your options open and closed you go under the display tab and you go to the gamma slider and you can change it according to how you like it or just so you could see a little bit better and uh, it, it can it can really help save your day sometimes especially when you're playing a human class that often has problems seeing in the dark some of you may already be aware of the Ore Haulers Haversack quest, where you get a 75% 10 slotted weight reduction bag, which is a great bag to have. But there's another bag that's even easier to get, but this only works on regular EverQuest servers, the live servers, and it might not work on most TLPs, at least not until much later where this NPC, uh, Sek Sekalna Galnor, appears. It's a Eurydite woman holding a book over here near the Crescent Reach Stone, also next to the Loyalist of EverQuest NPC. 
So we talk to them, hit hail, H for hail. That's how you get most of your quests. And you go down to the bazaar, tricks of the trade. You hit accept. And you can also preview this reward and you'll see it's a bag. It's 50% weight reduction, uh, capacity size 10. Uh, and it could fit things that are giant. So that is awesome. It's pretty easy. I can run through it right now really quick. I'll speed up the boring parts. You run your little butt to the bazaar. It helps if you're on a mount, which I am. <laughs> so things are going to go a little quicker. And remember, this first giant door... That's not the bazaar. That is the guild lobby. So you want to go past the trade skill building over here to the second large door, which is the bazaar. But we're not going into the bazaar. Oh, no, not yet. First, we have to talk to Nebo uh, Watzet. We hail him. We got to make sure our, our window's open. And we reply by clicking the prompts or you can also hit say but this is so much easier and task completed so you want to wait until you get that task completed and now it says talk to Nerman in within the bazaar so now we go up into the bazaar here and click the door to enter I think you don't have to click but I know clicking on the door will hasten your entering of the bazaar because sometimes I run up to it and nothing happens uh, sometimes I don't want to enter I change my mind at the last second but I get sucked into bazaar anyway even without clicking so it's it's a weird uh, portal right here so once we're in we just run straight to this big chamber and he's right here right by this main pillar, Nerman. You could tell he's the uh, ginger gnome in, in orange clothes. So we hail him and we answer his prompts. And there we go, task stage completed. Now it says find the teleporter to Blue Griffin Hall. So this is red. We want blue. And I guess in some universe this is blue. I, I could tell that the griffin on there is blue for sure, but the flag itself is more of a teal. And I guess, you know, in some circles, teal is blue. So that's where we want to go. It says stage complete. Now we want to speak to Elan about his electric cars or his Twitter. So here is uh, Elan. <laughs> Elan uh, Musk. No, just Elan. And he's in blue. He's a bald human. We just hail him. We respond to his prompts. And we get a task stage completed. Now we get find teleporter to Red Dragon Hall. So we exit. Go back through the teleporter. And see how easy it is. You don't even have to search the, the bizarre hall. It's right there next to the teleporter. And here's Red Dragon. So we go up. And remember, you could, you could tell just by those flags that are right there. So stage completed. And again, we don't have to go far. Don't have to search. Don't even need the find tool. It's right next to the teleporter where you come in. The first door right here, or doorway, and here we go. It's a little laggy because of all the people. We want Helena, Nerman's traitor, and we hail them. And we hit traitor and see task stage completed. We hit OK. And now it says to return to Nibba Wallets. In uh, Plane of Knowledge. So we going back the way we came. And of course it could be helpful. For you to read everything they're telling you. The NPCs. 
because it is a bit of a tutorial and explains a lot about how the bazaar works and all of that but I'm just rushing through this so I could just show you how it works where to go so you can get this bag for yourself once you're back in POK you want to go right over here to Nebo and you want to hail him you click on find or the prompt and there you go it's completed you have your reward so now I'm going to move one of my bags here to the side I'm going to select and the great thing about this is you get rewarded with both bags you get two bags you get a trader satchel which can be used to sell goods in the bazaar and you also get this 10 slotted 50% weight reduction bag so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trader satchel put that in the bank because you never want to equip the trader satchel to your character because it has a weight of 25 and it has no weight reduction at all it's a very heavy bag but it does give you you know a bag that you can keep in your bank if you don't use it for trading so now there's an extra 10 slots in the bank and it also uses a uh, fits capacity giant and I have the weight reduction bag on my character so now I have several nice weight reduction bags with me so I'm that much less worried about heavy objects in my inventory this might be more for players who get a little more advanced and they really want to customize their experience if you hit alt o you open up options and you go to keys and you can change the key binds to whatever you prefer and some folks will just want it to remain however it was some will want to edit things but this also lets you know what activates what like for example here uh, C is for duck which doesn't do a whole lot when you're on a mount but let's take off the mount and you see here when I hit C I'm ducking so that's great for when you are in a tight space or you're a tall race and you want to walk through a gnome or a halfling's house you might need to duck so you hit C and then you hit C again to unduck uh, and and say you want C to be used for something else well maybe you could change it here to be uh, control C instead but if you look here when it's in red it means it's being used for something else so then you'll have to look to see what else it's used for so I'm just gonna change it back to C because that's that's fine enough for me and you'll see here I did something over here where these are in red and it's S W A D and because they're they're being used for multiple things and what are they being used for well first it's used to move right but you'll see here control or I go to uh, the buttons here uh, and I go to hotkeys hotkeys 11 is this right here so if I click a hotkeys 11 it would toggle this little window over here and this is just a normal uh, you know normal bar like any others see but I made it into a more of a cube shape here because it fits better down in the corner and um, and what is this well if you open it up I created my own social hotkey where I it's for languages to learn languages because I'm on Ferona Vi server so if I let's say change the language to uh, something weird like ogre right and then I start uh, talking in ogre and when I'm having a mercenary in my group a mercenary or any other player uh, and if I'm spamming 
those buttons, I will slowly learn Ogre. Which, who knows, I might already be mastered at Ogre. Let's take a look here. I want to find a language that I'm not a master in. Ogre. Okay, I'm not a master at Ogre. So what did I do? I made sure to uh, go to here, go to Hotbar 11, and see this is where WASD is twice. That's why it's in red, because it, it does two different uh, things, right? Two or more. It activates these hotkeys. So every time I move, because I move with W-A-D-S, it triggers this. And look here. Better at Ogre, three. So just moving around, doing normal actions, makes you better at speaking a language. So over time, without a whole lot of thought, you can become a master at every single language just from playing the game. But this has also got another use that's very, very cool, very useful. Let's put this back here. As you could see, I'm not just talking in group because slash G and then typing a message is typing in group chat. And again, to talk in group chat and to get skill ups like this, you have to at least have a mercenary in your group, which there's group. And you see I have a clockwork defender in my group or you have to be grouped with another player. But you can also do other things with these hotkeys. If you have a monk, you might have abilities like sneak or hide or feign death or forage forage is more for rangers which i am so uh, forage sneak hide tracking tracking is a big one so over here i actually have doability four which activates tracking here's my tracking window so every time i move i'm tracking i'm triggering tracking so you, you see here, without much effort, my tracking skill is already at 99. I'm only level 21. <laughs> so yes, my tracking has gone up a lot because I've had this button. And every time I just move around, forward, backward, left, right, I'm practicing tracking. What else am I practicing? Number three, I'm practicing foraging. So I got slash timer four, comma, slash doability three. And what does this do? Well, it triggers forage. And then this pause of four will wait until I actually forage something, whether I succeed or fail. And then I have slash auto inventory, which if I do forage something, it should automatically go into my inventory. Sometimes it might fail uh, briefly, but then all I have to do is turn or move forward again and it will trigger auto inventory again and whatever item I have on my cursor will go into my bag because I don't want to keep dropping it anytime I get those vegetables or or pieces of fruit or berries those are all trade skill items I could either use them for trade skills or I could sell them I could sell them in the bazaar or to uh, even through the barter system because remember this command slash barter hit enter and I can uh, look for anything that I might have foraged like roots search and right now nobody's looking for regular roots just exposed roots so that's fine but sometimes people are sometimes there might be someone out there wanting to do uh, crafting maybe they're brewing they want some berries or some fruit or some vegetables and you can sell your, your, your junk that you consider it junk to other players for a little bit of money. So that is the use of setting your own hotkeys, creating keys that might have multiple functions like movement and also triggering some of your skills. And as you see, just from this little bit of moving uh, around, I've got up to Ogre 14 now. So it's a great way to skill up in a bunch of different things. If you're a monk, you can even have it do uh, like feign death, although that could be kind of a pain in the ass. 
because you know you're moving you're going ah, and you're falling to the ground but then you can have it have like a short pause and then you can have it automatically stand you back up so you're only you're only stopped for like a second you automatically get back up and you can keep on running and look now my tracking is at 100 and I'm only level uh, 20 or 21 so pretty cool one great feature that Live EverQuest has that some of the project servers don't have, or, or some have their own version of it, is the many chat channels. And what are the chat channels? Well, you could see up here in this window where people are talking in general chat, for example. And that is server-wide. So the whole server of Feronavai can share in chat. This could be very, very useful if you're looking for a group, you could say, you know, like this guy right here saying anyone looking for group. Uh, so people can group up and or just maybe if they're trying to sell something very specific or uncommon that people don't normally look for in the bazaar, they can do that there also. So how do you know what chat channels you're in and, and how to join other ones? Well, you can hit slash list. Or type slash list hit enter and here on the left bottom it says channels one general and it says how many players are actually in that channel which is 399 right now then ranger which I'm auto automatically entered into whatever channel is specific for my class right and then uh, planes because I guess I'm in the plane of knowledge I I don't know it's always some of these channels are kind of weird, like I wonder how or why they got started. So let's say I'm not in general chat for some reason. Well, I can hit slash join general and then I'd hit enter. Uh, if I, Let's say I wanted to make up my own channel. Let's say I've got like three or four friends that play uh, all the time. And we want our own channel and maybe we're all in different guilds. We're good friends, but we're all in different guilds or we made our own guilds or we have no interest in guilds, but we still want to chat in, in a group chat. So we can, we can make up a channel and call it channel chaos. Hit enter. And now you see I'm in channel chaos and there's only one person in it. So if I want to, I can tell all my friends, hey, join Channel Chaos and chat with me. Let's say I want to leave Channel Chaos. I believe I could hit leave four. You go by the number on there, hit enter, and now you see I'm no longer on Channel Chaos. So you can leave any channel. Just hit slash leave. And then you would use the number, instead of the name, use the number of whatever channel is showing. Like 3 equals planes, 2 equals ranger. So I could leave the ranger channel if I want to. Let's say you made up a channel and you always want to be on that channel. You log in, you want to be already on that channel. So you would hit slash auto join chaos right so I want to auto join chaos and set the channels to be joined at login chaos so now anytime I log in this character I'm going to auto join channel chaos so I don't know how to not auto join a channel I'm assuming it might be auto leave or something. I will have to look into that. But you can auto join channels and that way anytime you log in, you'll automatically join some of those channels. Here's a small note where general chat cannot be joined if you're a free to play character. At least from what I've seen, I've tried to join it when I have a free-to-play account and it doesn't let me. Instead, it lets me join channel 
new players. Which is almost as good. It's just you're only chatting with other free-to-play characters. You're not chatting with general population with premium accounts. I, I think it's a little silly. I think you should be able to join because you're still a player in in general EverQuest and, and you could still join and team up with premium players and that's just sort of kind of segregating the two groups. You know, it's like the wealthy who can afford to pay and the people who are just broke but still like EverQuest anyway. Or they just don't feel like it's worth paying for. And, and yeah, they're, they're kind of separated, which is kind of bogus. So I, I don't know why they do that. But again, that is a way that you can communicate with others. Uh, you can create your own channels and uh, have, you know, friends joining that channel. So, hey, if you'd like to join Channel Chaos, you could just hit auto join chaos or just hit slash join chaos. And you could talk to me. Of course, it's only going to be on the Throne of Eyes server. So, eh. Let's say you've quested every bag that you were aware of. And you still want more bags. Especially larger bags with greater capacity. Well, if you checked out the Daybreak store. If you're on a regular standard server. They have some really amazing bags. So... Before I get carried away, open the Daybreak store by clicking on the DB button. I keep mine over here on the left bottom. It might be somewhere else on your screen, depending on how you set things up. You would click under Bags here, and this shows you all the bags that are available. These things that look like little Christmas gifts or whatever are bundles, so they might contain two or more bags of you know, you can see it says Journeyman's Pocketed Rugsack. And here's Journeyman's Pocketed Rugsack. So it, this bundle contains two of these. So these are 32 slotted, 100% weight reduction bags. Very, very good. One of my favorite bags are these here. Trade Master's Component Satchel. Now these bags only contain or hold trade skill items. But they're 40 slot and a lot of stuff qualifies as trade skill items, guys. Um, rusty weapons qualifies as trade skill items. So if you're harvesting rusties to have a cheap and easy way of getting your smithing up a little bit, well, they all fit in here and then they won't weigh you down and you can have 40 of them. What else? Uh, fine steel like your level 30 plus you're starting to fight hill giants you want all that fine steel to sell because those sell at five platinum each or they can also be used for trade skills you can melt them down and make high quality ore well this is the same you know it carries all of those and all the pelts and things and um that you that you end up with all this stuff it's all trade skill items and there are bags that are similar that can be crafted, which is extra planar trade satchel. But you need a pretty high tailoring skill to make these. And these are only 32 slots, 100% weight reduction, as opposed to the ones you can get from the store here, the Daybreak store, which are 40 slot. Uh, and then there's, there's these bags over here. These have 28 slots 100% uh, weight reduction so I think these are actually better because these have 32 slots so these are, are better I don't know what these are these are uh, two these contain uh, four, oh, four 28 slotted bags two bottles of adventure uh, one double faction potion one metamorph totem merc glider. Oh wow. I See, I never even inspected this to see all of what's in there. I just saw this bag with the colors and stuff. And I thought, oh, that's, that just looks weird. I don't want that bag. So, 
I never messed with it, but that seems like actually you get a lot of stuff for that package. Uh, but yeah, you could check out the store and you get some great bags through the store. And some of my characters actually have these bags. Of course, you need to use Daybreak Currency. If you're a premium member, it gives you a little bit of a discount. So let's say you wanted this bag. It's 2200 but it's only 1980 if you're a premium member because you get the membership discount of minus 220 Another helpful hint has to do with Radiant Flora. What's Radiant Flora, you might ask? Well, it's all of this. It's all of these little bushes and uh, shrubberies. A shrubbery! Uh, that is surrounding my little gnome here. He's, he's drowning in it. He's drowning in a sea of shrubberies. And you could barely see him depending on the angle that he's running. Like say here, it's, it's almost difficult for him to even see the POK book here. Uh, it can be difficult for him to see things like snakes that are crawling in the weeds. You see, he the snake completely disappears under some of this stuff. All you see is the name the, of the snake moving and like the spider, the spider's completely under there. So what can you do? What's a gnome to do or a halfling to do when they're surrounded by radiant flora like this? Well, they could stay on the road or you can hit Alt O. You can click on the display tab here, click advanced and you could disable the radiant flora. You can enable it if you want to see it. If you're an ogre, a barbarian, or even a human or an elf, Radiant Flora is not a big problem for you because you're standing well above it all. And it does add some nice ambiance to it. But if you're little, like me, if, if you're a gnome or a halfling, not having it can be such a benefit, such a bonus. And see, now I could see things. I could see myself. I could see the snakes crawling around on the grass. <laughs> I say that and there's like not a snake to be found anywhere. Look at this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, here's another thing that can be hidden by Radiant Flora. Misty acorns. Misty acorns, which are ground spawn, which you can only see. It doesn't have a name floating above it. And you can only see it when you have... Oh, well, there's a snake. See how easy it is to see the snake now? But ground spawns are another reason to turn off Radiant Flora. Even if you are a taller species, a taller race, you want to turn off Radiant Flora if you're hunting for Misty Acorns. And you're like, Misty Acorns? What the hell are those and what are they for? Well, they are valuable. Very valuable. Uh, I don't know if anybody's buying them right now, but let's check slash barter. Hit enter. Open up our barter window here. And let's see if anyone's buying Misty Acorns right now. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Do a search. Look at this. Look at this. There are people buying Misty Acorns right now. Someone is offering 289 platinum for a single misty acorn on Ferona Vi, someone named Green Mist. So we're going to sell them this one and we're going to get uh, 289 platinum. Sell. There we go. Almost 300 platinum for something I found on the floor. I didn't even have to kill for it. I didn't have to do anything. All I needed to do was turn off Radiant Flora and and look around and stare at the floor and these things spawn pretty regular uh, sadly they're they're a little hard to spot so you need to have some good eyes put your glasses on maybe turn your gamma up a little bit if you have to and just run around and just look for any little off color spots on the on the grass and you might spot one. Of course, right now, since I'm making a video, I probably won't spot any more at all. The minute I stop recording, 
I probably come across five. But they are kind of hard to find. They are a little bit rare. You can also forage these. So if you have like a ranger or a druid and you're running around here. What's this here? Oh, it's some berries, I guess. I'll, I'll pick that up, sure. And uh, did I just see one? I thought I saw one. Nope, I guess not. But that is another reason to turn off Radiant Flora is that you can find things on the ground that you could sell for money. And, uh, you know, who doesn't like money? Especially if you're new and starting. Uh, it's, it's very, very useful to be able to see what's on the floor. Uh, especially here in the Misty Thicket. Let's, let's absolutely confirm. Yes, we are in Misty Thicket. We are in the Halfling Zone. And these things, like I said, they spawn on the ground. They're a little bit rare. They're very hard to see. But if you can spot them, pick them up. You can sell them. Uh, and if you're not selling them, that means, you, you know, you might, might want to use them <laughs> to uh, make yourself some uh, I, uh, acorn oil, I believe it's called. Acorn oil, because that is used to make uh, halfling only uh, bags called uh, Leatherfoot Haversack. And it's, I think, a, a 10 slot. 100% uh, weight reduction bag, again, that only halflings can make. And it's a great way for them to either, one, be able to carry heavy stuff, or two, make some money. Because those bags, once they make them, they're tradable and sellable. So they can trade and sell them to other players. And I'm not seeing any more of those acorns. So I'm not going to waste your entire day just by talking about these stupid acorns but again you know you find a couple and uh, it could end up being much easier and cheaper or much easier and faster than trying to hunt some hill giants at level 30 or whatever to make plat it's just finding some of these acorns especially if there's someone buying them and willing to pay that much for them uh, I say go for it. Uh, I, you know, there's other trade skill items too that sell for just as much or even more. So always save your trade skill items. That's another good thing. Oh, here we go. There's another one. Another acorn. So what are we going to do? We're going to open barter. We're going to look for our little acorn here. Yep, there we go. Do another search and see, yeah, he's uh, still buying them. So let's sell another one. And we got another 289 platinum. So, yep, got over 500 platinum just by selling these little acorns. So that's another helpful hint is to hang on to your trade skill items, even if you found it on the floor, because chances are, Somebody out there needs it, wants it, and is going to pay through the nose to get it. So this has been video number two on tips and tricks for new or beginning or returning players uh, for EverQuest. I hope this was useful to you and you enjoyed it. Please leave a like in the video if you liked it. Please leave a dislike if you hated it, if it was completely awful. <laughs> you can leave a dislike if you were like meh then don't leave a like or a dislike <laughs> it's all up to you of course i would love it if you could subscribe to the channel it would really help me out a lot i'd really like to see the channel grow i'd like to turn this into a community you can also join the channel as a member memberships have their privileges you get some member only content you get little badges. Uh, the, the first badge looks like a decaying skeleton. Uh, and you get emojis, like custom emojis, exclusive to the channel. And uh, 
you also help the channel. You support the channel and support me and what I do. There is also a Patreon. You could join the Patreon. There they get commercial free early access to videos and also access to some custom content. And there's also a Twitter if you want to join the Twitter or follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's absolutely free, of course. You, uh, you can know when I'm doing things and posting new videos or, or just uh, here on YouTube and you also get notification that I have a new video. So, thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow.